Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Daniel here, and today I'm going to be continuing the Unity 3D tutorial series. And in this episode, I'll be finishing up, hopefully, the GUI system. So in the previous episode, we finished up random enemy movement, so our guy will randomly move around. And... Uh, I just died. Uh, and we can, we can kill him, and... stuff. Yeah, and we've got a score system, and that, that's about all we've got. So today I'm going to be doing the second half of the GUI system, so that way we've got more of a, a variety, and I want to show you how to use the programming side of the GUI system rather than just the, you know, the game object. Like, you can program it and make it do a bunch of weird stuff. So to get started, we're going to go ahead and just open up the GUI text handler. And uh, we're going to go from there. So once you've got it opened, we're going to need to put in two new variables. Uh, first, we're going to do static var paused. And we're going to make this a boolean and set it equal to false. Yes, I'm also going to be covering uh, pausing your game. And uh, the other one we'll get back to in a second. Down here, just below your function update, you're going to hit enter twice. We're going to create a new function called on GUI. This is one already preset inside of Unity, so this will be similar to function update which is called every single frame of the game, but instead focuses mostly on GUI related stuff. So what we're gonna do first is we're going to do if GUI dot button parentheses rect, more parentheses, and here we're going to set it up based upon uh, the screen width and height. So we're going to need four parameters in here inside the set of parentheses. For the first one, we're going to do screen dot width divided by four and then comma uh, screen dot height divided by six and then comma 100 comma 25 outside of those parentheses we're going to do another comma and then two quotations and inside we're going to put in reset and then to close off the if statement we're going to surround it in brackets there we go okay so what this is doing is it's checking to see if gui dot button that is erect uh, which is just rectangular and uh, screen dot width divided by four so it's taking the width of the screen and then dividing it into four uh, I, I would do hand gestures but obviously you wouldn't see them so it wouldn't matter uh, so it doesn't matter like what type of monitor you have like mine's more square than rectangular so mine will be divided up into four smaller like uh, sections and if you had a widescreen monitor it would be divided up into four larger sections and same goes for screen dot height and uh, so that's that's covering the two dimensions on the uh, x and y planes and then same here we've got uh, 125 so 100 on the x axis so we're scaling it 100 times on the x-axis and 25 on the y-axis so it'll be 100 long and 25 wide no 25 tall yeah and then reset is just what's going to be on it so inside of the uh inside of the brackets we're going to do score equals zero so what this is going to do is if we hit this button, it's going to reset our score back to zero. So we can go ahead back into the game real quick. 
and if we hit play here we go we've got this button right here that says reset if I click it nothing happens obviously because my score is already zero but if I fire and I kill the guy and then I hit reset it sets it back to zero so that's covering the basic button now for the next part we're going to need to go back up into our function update and we're going to do another if statement so if input dot get get key up oh, get key up and inside we're going to do quotations and then escape so if we get the escape key and we make sure that the key comes back up to its returning position then we're going to set paused equal to true and below this if statement we're going to do if paused time dot time scale is equal to zero down on this parentheses we're going to do else time dot time scale is equal to one okay so time dot time scale put it easily is just covering the speed at which the game runs so if we set it equal to zero it's running at zero frames a second therefore paused if we set equal to one it's running at normal speed yeah complicated stuff but uh yeah so it's if we get the escape key it'll set paused equal to true if paused is equal to true it will pause the game if it isn't then the game will run at normal speeds so what we're going to do now is we're going to use our complicated GUI stuff and we're going to do if inside the, uh, the the on GUI function not in the update or else it will not work so in this new if statement we're going to do GUI no no if paused there sorry about that inside of this pot if statement we're going to do another if so if GUI dot button rect we're going to do screen dot width divided by two so it'll be centered in the middle of your monitor screen dot height divided by two so in the dead center this is where this button is going to go and then we're going to do 100 comma 25 just like the last one outside of those parentheses we're going to do comma quotations and so the quotations you can put whatever you want but i'm just going to put resume because that's what it's going to be for and inside of this if button statement we're going to do paused is equal to false there so second to see if it's if this is paused which we worked out up here and if we hit the button which is only going to appear if it's paused then it's going to set paused equal to false therefore hiding this again and resuming the game so if we go ahead and hit play I'm going to go ahead and hit escape as you can see he's no longer moving towards me I can't move at all you, you, you might be able to hear it maybe not uh, and if I hit resume it resumes the game now it, as you can see he kind of died reason being is because if I pause the game I still fire even if I click they don't go anywhere but they still appear so if I hit resume they all fire off and due to the large trigger sphere that we set for him which we will still need to fix uh, it will kill him as soon as the game um, on pauses so we're going to need to adjust that and change it so that way he cannot be killed or we cannot fire when we're paused so this is the reason why we set this, this uh, variable as a static because we're going to call it in a separate uh, script so you can go ahead and minimize this and open up your player movement and inside player movement down here where we um, 
check to see if we have the mouse button up right next to it inside of the if parentheses we're going to do and 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 then we're going to do GUI dot no GUI GUI text handler so the name of our script dot paused and before the GUI text handler part we're going to put an exclamation mark so it's now checking to see if we get the mouse button up and it isn't paused so if it isn't paused and we get the mouse button up it should fire so if I go ahead and hit play let me hit play there we go if I hit escape as you can see I'm not firing at all you can check down here nothing's being added into there if I hit resume I can fire if I hit paused nothing happens so now we've covered the basic pausing and uh, back to the last variable just because I don't know I just wanted to cover one last GUI thing before we finished up we're gonna need another static static var rounds fired which is going to be an int you could you can shorten it up if you want it doesn't particularly matter I just did that because I didn't want to have to type out rounds so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down to our on GUI function enter a few times if you want everything evenly spaced out but now we're gonna do GUI dot label parentheses rect it's at the parentheses we're gonna do screen dot width uh, divided by seven here wait one second my, my mic's being messed up okay I'm back sorry about that uh, I have to fix my mic with tape yeah I don't want to have to buy a new one, so I just fixed it with tape, and the tape's coming undone. So, uh, screen dot width divided by seven, comma. Screen dot height divided by two, comma, two fifty, comma twenty five. Outside of the parentheses, uh, we're going to do another comma space quotations, just like all the other ones we've done. And outside of the quotations, we're going to do rounds fired and then outside of the quotations we're going to do plus rdns fired so what this is going to do is it's going to create a label with these coordinates and th these scalings it's going to say rounds fired colon and then it's going to add the rounds fired to this number well to this string so if I go ahead and minimize this and hit play real quick as you can see rounds fired is right here it may not be in the same spot on your screen mostly because this is this is how my my monitor is set up uh, but if I fire as you can see it's not going up because we still have to set it up so if we go ahead and hit the play button again so it's, it's done playing we go back in here and then switch over to our player movement script we're going to go down to the if statement that we adjusted earlier with the uh, if it isn't GUI text handler and you know firing and whatnot and we're gonna also do at the bottom GUI text handler dot RDNS fired plus plus so if it fires, it's going to add one to our rounds fired variable. Go ahead and save it. Always save, it's very important. I'm gonna go ahead and hit play again. So if I start firing, as you can see, the number is increasing with every shot I fire. And if I hit that, I can't fire at all. As you can see, the number is not increasing. If I hit resume, start firing again. 
If I hit reset, it resets my score back to zero and I can fire as much as I want. So yeah, uh, that, that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Uh, the next one, I'll quickly go over how to fix the, uh, the whole trigger sphere thing so that way he isn't getting killed by these shots. And that, that should be a really quick tutorial. Um, and then after that, I will most likely cover some save data so that way you can save specific parts of your game like uh, like your score your other like other things like that and then we might just work on a little bit of aesthetics kind of thing make it look pretty mm -hmm. just add materials make it look nice and uh, then after that I have no idea so if you guys have any ideas please leave them below I think there was one on making like a vehicle of sorts so I'll I'll likely cover that as well but yeah th that's really all I have for these tutorials so if you've got any ideas or things that you want me to cover just let me know I just can't think of any more off the top of my head so uh, remember to like comment subscribe show me that you care it's important to me I know that there are people out there who enjoy watching me do this kind of thing. So, yeah, hope this helped, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care.